Help support the companies that support our community. All right, I have a block of maple burl here. It is four by four by four. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in between t centers. But before we get started, I wanna talk about the last project video we did. So we did the little tops for the glasses we found at the thrift store. <clears throat> so quick tip, don't make that tenon that goes down in, in uh, inside of the glass too tight. So the glass right here, this little one I did, I don't think we filmed that, that one, but I did that one. It, it just barely slid in there. So we came out the next morning after they were done and Robin went to move it and it popped the side of the glass off. So don't make that, make them a little bit loose. It was what? Thin. It was, yes, it was. The other two glasses were actually really thick glass, but it was a thin piece of glass so or a thin glass so that probably had something to do with it because it wasn't that tight what we're going to do here is so after we got the the glasses done for the <laughs> for the last project we took them in the house and we were just kind of looking at them and i thought about doing um mason jars so that's what we're going to do we're going to do a, a top for a mason jar i have the lid for it so we're going to just pop out the center and do that and robin looked at me and she said can you make one that's actually a funnel so you can easily fill rice or sugar or whatever you want into your mason jar and it just screws right onto the top so what a great idea so we're going to do a lid right here we're going to make this one into a vase but i will make you a mason jar funnel after we're done with this all right have lay speed about a thousand rpms and we're just going to true it up with a bowl gouge on second thought it's a roughing gouge not a bowl gouge All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the tenon down on this side and I'm using the Easy Wood Rougher. There we go, and now we'll get it into the chuck. Still have a couple little spots to clean up, but that's no big deal. Get the chuck on. And then we're gonna go ahead and size that lid that's going into it. All right, so this is the lid that we're gonna put in recess inside of it. So it's gonna use the calipers, gauge that, and then I'm gonna take these and put it right up against the wood here and make a mark around it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start hauling out. I'm going to use the number one hauler first, and then I'll come back and start making that recess with a parting tool.
So I want this one, the actual little ring thing there, to go down inside of it quite a ways. Because there, there's a little flange on the, the mason jars, and I'm going to try and hide that part. So on the lid, this ring right here is actually bigger than the than in here. So I'm going to have to adjust for that too. We're really close on that, but I, this needs to go up in there at a probably quarter of an inch or so. This needs to recess in there. So I'm just going to keep working on that. I'll adjust for that that ring on the bottom too. All right, so it turns out that this lip and this lip are the same height. It just looks like it's different. I kept bringing it down to fit it in there and, and it, until it actually was the same diameter. Anyway, <laughs> we got it. So I'm going to put the lid in there. I'm going to draw a line around where the opening is. And then we're going to come back with the number one hauler and clean out right to there. So when you screw this together, it's just going to be the opening is going to be that big so you can put put some flowers in the vase all right so i'm just going to clean this up a little bit more and the, and then we'll start shaping it so i have our jar here so went in and put the lid on so this lip right here hits before it goes down to the bottom and I kind of want to cover that little lip up a little bit so I'm gonna come out here and do another little little recess right here to accommodate for that so let's go ahead and it's not very much so we'll just start working on that a little bit and and get that down I'm gonna use the parting tool again for that We'll just keep turning it off and on. That is really close. And this one, it you know, you're not gluing it on or anything, so it doesn't have to be perfect because the lid is going to be glued in there, so it's going to line everything up. going over it now. right inside of it all right have that all all cleaned up in there now I'm gonna go ahead and start shaping the outside of it so I'm gonna come up straight a little while and then to get past where that that recess is there and then we'll go in and make a and then we'll flip it around on the chuck and the lay speeds at 2500 rpms
All right, I'm just going to use the pencil here, measure the depth right there so that we know right where the top of that lid is because I don't want to start curving in here because we'll, we'll hit it on the inside. So it is right there. So we can't, can't go in until we get past that. All right. So I do need to clean up the face of this real quick. It's a little bit of a wobble in it. Like that. Then we'll go back to the spindle gouge and start shaping it. go so we have that that all that shape done what I'm going to do is this is really nice piece of maple burl so I'm going to part it off right here and that way I can save this chunk for something else it is a little soft too and that's why the spindle gouge is working really well when you can ride the bevel on that all right parting tool I left that about an inch or so. I'm going to go ahead and sand this real quick. I'm going to turn on the dust collector, sand it, and then we will then we will flip it around and expand the jaws to uh, to uh, hold onto it and finish off the top. All right, have that all sanded. Just go ahead and finish parting it off here. So when you're doing these two, even the, the ones with the glass, make sure you go up in there just a little bit um, so that when you come around and start start working from the top, you it'll pop through and then that way you can see a little better. So my jaws are going to go right in this ring right here, but on the other ones, it went they went up there pretty far. So I made sure that I hollowed a lot of that out from, the, from this side before I flipped it around because you can't see anything and the jaws are right there. All right. Let's get this out of here and put, put this one in. Oh, look at that. It worked. Nice. All right. I'm going to go ahead and clean up that little, little, little thing right there and bring the tailstock back up. Now, I'm bringing this up because it is just held in there by the expansion mode, and I don't want to be taking heavy cuts on it and break it so that will support it and you can not have to worry about it. Bring it down about right there. Pretty good size opening on top, so you can fit some flowers in there.
round that over. All right. Then we can come straight in and clean out the, the inside of it. Right back to the number one hollower. And just start working our way down until we pop through. Right there. We'll go ahead and sand all of this and then we can put a finish on it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the dust collector back on and work on that. All right, I went ahead and sanded up to 400. This is just 600 here and I'm going to go ahead and put the oil on it. I'm just gonna do oil, oil on this one. The last ones I did pins plus. This is like a mason jar, kind of think a little rustic, not as finished and glossy like the other ones. Thought that would look a little better than than the glossy finish. All right, look at that beautiful piece of pearl. There we go, it's all done. I didn't show you gluing the cap in because I did not glue the cap in. We pulled it off the lathe, put it on the jar we were gonna use, and it looks stupid. <laughs> it, it just looks bad, it doesn't flow with it. So the flange around here, I could have come down deeper, but then it would it would have gone up, you know, been like double that, and I still don't think it would have looked good, but trying to accommodate you know some type of shape and trying to get around that flange just was not working so robin saved me she ran in the house went through the cupboards and found another jar that actually fits so this is a planter's peanut jar and it just it flows much better with it comes straight up and then comes in so we're gonna put some flowers in this one so when you're picking out a jar to make a vase with don't pick one that curves way in and then has you know something that's going to limit you on the shape of the shape of the lid so we we were going through them after that and we did find some but they were wider mouth ones and they did go straight up and just barely in a little bit so i think those ones would probably work a little bit better but yeah with with something that curves in that sharp and then that sticks out it just it did not look good at all so we, we went with that one, the planter's peanut jar. So it looks really cool. I like the way it, it flows up right into that little bead right there, and it will make a nice vase. So I mentioned um, in the beginning of the video with the glasses that we, that we did a couple of weeks ago. So make sure that you leave a little bit of room in there. This is a thicker glass than the one that broke. It, the one that broke was actually really thin, but I don't think it would matter. If you made this tight, it would pop the side of it off. It's, um, if there's, you know, some wood movement, it'll, the glass is, is weaker than the, than the wood, so it would pop it. So just make sure you leave yourself a little bit of room with that so they don't uh, end up breaking and after you fill them up with water. Um, all right, I think that's about it. it was, uh, yeah, really enjoying playing around with trying to come up with different different things to turn into a vase. Uh, one thing before I go, uh, we are going to be at the SWAT Symposium in Waco, Texas at, at the end of the month here. We put out a newsletter, but I think we're going to put out another newsletter before we go for Niles. So we'll, we're leaving on the 23rd, so we won't ship any orders on 23rd through the 28th. Uh, ninth is when we come back so if you need anything just order me you know in the next week or so and we'll get it out but if not we'll we'll get it out when we get back all right hope you enjoyed the video everybody have a great weekend and we'll see you next week take care